Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> How are y'all? How are y'all? Good. You're here, I'm here. So glad you're here. We're going to get started. I'm going to rely on y'all to sing loud. It's been a little bit since I've sang, so we're going to make it through these songs together. If y'all want to stand and enter into worship with us.
You can be seated, and kids, if you'd like to come up for the children's message. Hello. How about our pastor? He does a little bit of everything, doesn't he? He preaches, he sings, he plays guitar, he leads youth group sometimes. Hey. Okay. So, are you guys brave? Are you guys ever brave? Sometimes it's brave just to get up here in front of everybody, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So, did you know in the Bible it tells us that we're supposed to be brave? It says in Joshua, <laughs> Remember that I commanded you to be strong and brave, so don't be afraid. The Lord your God will be with you everywhere you go. You know what that means? That means even when we're scared of something, we don't need to be scared because God is with us. He's inside of us always. So whether we're having to tell somebody we're sorry or we're having to come up in front of the church or we've got to talk out loud in class, God is always with us and he's always helping us to be strong and brave. Isn't that good to know? Okay, you guys can walk to Kid Zone. Uh, there will be no quizzing and no youth group tonight. We've got a lot of people gone for the holidays. So enjoy your time with friends and family tonight, and we'll get those back up. We have our first teen quiz meet on Saturday. So be praying for us and the kids. We're traveling to Lombard for that. So getting up bright and early in the morning for that. Good morning, again. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> you get me twice. I'm, uh, you have to forgive me, I'm, share I'm sharing the service on Facebook right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was finishing up my cat videos. <laughs> Excellent. How's everybody doing? Good week. We had some travelers that are back. We have some travelers that are gone. We have some people not feeling well, so keep them in prayer. We will be doing communion at the end of the, of the sermon, so if you all want to grab the elements, if you have not, they are on the table. Ah gathered my voice back. Thank you, Maria and Gabe, but Maria for stopping the song for me so I could get my, my footing. <laughs> I was like, hold on, wait a second. Oh, thank you guys for being patient with us. Oh, so we're in week three of our Glow in the Dark series, and we've been talking about uh, biblical, let's test this, eh? Hey? No, we're not there. There we are, okay. We're uh, talking about biblical concepts of light and darkness and what it all means to us. Today we're going to continue on with this theme by landing on the words of Jesus in the New Testament. So specifically, I want us to look at what we are choosing to take into our bodies and our souls. I believe this is a, it's kind of a determining factor on whether we share the light or we share darkness with the world around us. Um, Yeah, y'all ever ate too much? <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> I know, it's only one piece. That's what I thought too. He's, he's still... <laughs> maybe, it's, maybe, for, maybe for you it's fried food. Maybe it's dairy. For me it's pretty much everything except for spicy food. I don't like spicy food. It's gross not gross it just doesn't like me actually taco bell some <laughs> taco bell's gonna get you almost every time it's just 
the cheapest gas we have right now. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> but how did it make you feel? You overate, you felt like crap, right? You felt bad. It was terrible. Pretty rough afterwards. And we knew, the worst part is we knew it was coming. We did it on purpose, right? We didn't think, oh, I'm going to eat all this. I'm going to feel amazing afterwards. We all have this choice in life. We get to choose what goes into our bodies when we're eating breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack, brunch. Some people call it supper, not dinner. I prefer to call it supper. Some people call dinner and lunch or dinner, it's supper. It's, it's yeah, it's, uh, it's an age thing, I think. In town or rural? Isn't it all rural around here, though? Are that so Paxton? Is that considered city folk? Okay, fair enough. But at some point in our lives, <laughs> we have to be even more particular about what goes in our bodies and keep track of it because the older we get, the more intentional we have to be. I'm finding that out right now, that I have to work harder to get where I would like to be than I used to. So in a spiritual sense, the Bible kind of says it's the same principle for that, for, for our spiritual health as well. Contrary to popular belief, it matters what we take into our souls. The world doesn't necessarily believe that. Today we're going to look at what Jesus says will provide light inside of us so that we can share that light with others. If you have your Bibles, you can turn to Luke Luke chapter 11. And we're going to start in verse 33. Luke 11, 33. It says, No one lights a lamp and puts it in a place where it will be hidden or under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand so that those who come in may see the light. Your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eyes are healthy, your whole body also is full of light. But when they are unhealthy, your body is also full of darkness. See to it then that the light within you is not darkness. Therefore, if your whole body is full of light and no part of it is dark, it will be just as full of light as when a lamp shines a light on you. So Jesus makes a, a key statement up front in this passage that we're meant to share our light with others. So he uses the analogy of, of, of a house and a lamp within that house, which gives light to everybody who enters the house. In a similar sense, we're called to put forth spiritual Christ-like light for everybody to see. But there's a key question Jesus wants us to wrestle with from this passage as well. What are we actually filling ourselves with? What are we putting in? Is it real, abundant light? Do we have corners of our life, just kind of like the corners of a house, where we have darkness? The light doesn't quite reach those places. Or maybe we've got some junk stacked in there because we think people can't see it. What's coming into our lives through our eyes, as Jesus points out? These questions are the ones that I want to work through this morning. What your eyes see will be. So when I was 13, I went to my first concert. Uh, it was a band called Jeff Moore in the Distance. They were a big 90s Christian music group. They had a few hits. Um, and I heard a couple of their songs previously. That I, knew I, I knew I liked them, uh, and I liked them well enough to bug my brother to take me to a concert when they came to Lafayette, Indiana. Um, when I got there, and I had actually experienced the concert, that was the moment that everything kind of shifted for me and changed. It resulted in me going to about 30 more of their concerts over the years becoming friends with the band, ultimately, and even playing my own music. So that was a result, a chain reaction, of how I lived my own life, essentially. 
it was the, the moment in my life when I saw something for the first time and I knew I wanted more of it. So I became a super fan of, the, of this band overnight and wanted to experience them as much as possible. So I started to, to identify with them because of how much I saw them and how much I listened to them. So it all originated from what my eyes and my ears took in. It's often said that the eyes are the windows or the keys to the soul. So from a spiritual standpoint, what our eyes see really does matter. All throughout the gospel, there's accounts where Jesus is teaching on a lot of different topics, one of which is sin, and that's a big one. He's trying to help us learn how to, how to live the best life possible, the abundant life that he has come to give us. A life of holiness, which is the main message of the Church of the Nazarene. So in his Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5, Jesus is talking specifically about the sin of adultery, correcting some misconceptions when he, when he says this. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So did you catch that key word, look? Jesus seems to be concerned with where we look. In fact, most of the time when you and I are tempted to turn towards something other than God, it begins with just a glance. We're just glancing at it. We think it's not a big deal. If it's just a, a, a brief glance. And yet, if we're not careful over time, our glance can turn into a gaze and a fixation. Maybe, maybe this is exactly where you find yourself today or in some similar situation. I believe the same principle that dis distract us can also help us to regain a commitment to God himself. If we're willing to turn away from, from the darkness and once again look towards the way of Jesus, we'll find ourselves gazing at God rather than gazing at things of the world. So this process is one that Jesus invites us into in Luke 11. The process of, of naming the parts of our lives that are still in darkness. Being real with ourselves and with God so that ultimately the light can shine through. His light shines in our past, it shines in our present, and it will shine in our future. But the question remains, how do we do this? How do we, how do we fixate on Jesus more than the things that are easily accessible, accessible and familiar to us in the world? It's all about rhythm. You ever heard a song that you found yourself kind of nodding your, your head to in the car? You ever done this? Or maybe if you're Gabe, you've done the, the drums on the steering wheel. Maybe, maybe you just started dancing at the red light. Ever, anybody ever done that? I knew Julie was a little red light dancer. We were captivated by a solid rhythm in music. Spiritually speaking, the Bible shares with us that the the keys to healthy rhythms in our life day by day. The rhythms can, can really, truly be the separating factor between healthy living and unhealthy living. So last week we spent time in the message talking about the importance of Scripture lighting our way and becoming a regular rhythm in our lives. But what about some others? What are some helpful ways to let the light into our souls? I think two in particular are key. First is prayer. Prayer in our lives moves mountains. It is the key to the rhythm in our lives. The Bible gives us countless examples of faithful prayer from people just like you and me. Paul says something profound about prayer in Ephesians 1.18. So I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the, his holy people. So Paul is praying that people's hearts would be flooded with light. It's the, it's really, it's the very concept that we're, that we're talking about from Luke 11, and Paul shows us how to get it. 
Pray for eyes to see things like bright light. Pray for God to, to shield you from things that bring darkness. Pray for light to radiate from you so that others can see. Prayer helps you and I to deepen our intimate relationship with God. That's how we grow our relationship. And he's waiting to hear from us. So why don't we just talk to him? In addition to prayer, Sabbath is another piece of the healthy rhythm. And this is something that God himself lays out for us in the story of creation from the very beginning, all the way back to Genesis 1 and 2. The Bible says, by the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all of his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it, he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. So did God rest because he was tired? Probably not. He's God, right? So instead, God gave us a model to follow. He did it for us. So pick one day each week when you can invest time in doing something other than your normal routine. You don't have to sleep all day, which I would love to one day. But you don't have to sleep all day. Just do something different from your normal routine that kind of relaxes you and helps you unwind. There has to be a healthy rhythm of both work and rest in our lives if we want to experience the light. If there's not, we'll, we'll be tempted in moments of both weakness and fatigue and we'll most likely give in to that temptation because we don't have the strength to overcome it. God's desire is for us to respond to him and his invitation today to, to reevaluate our daily rhythms. I did a whole sermon series on daily rhythms not too long ago, several months ago. And we have to know that the healthy ones hold the key to abundant life with the light. And we have to be filled to overflow. I want to direct your attention back to the very beginning of the passage in Luke's Gospel. Jesus says the lamps filled with light are placed on a stand where all can witness who go into the house. One way or another, people look at our lives and begin to evaluate them. We get judged all the time. I would even argue that people will also get something from our lives. They're going to take something away from it as well, whether that's good or bad. When they get close enough to us, the question is, what will they be given? So if you let somebody in, what are they going to get from you? What are they going to take away? God's desire for our lives to overflow with his light, especially in a dark and corrupt world. We spent time today talking about how to make sure that there's a true light within us. But we shouldn't forget about the call to share that light with others. Here's what Jesus says in an extremely well-known passage at the end of his, his earthly ministry. It says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you to the very end of the age. So he calls people like you and I to go and make disciples, to take what's in us and to give it to people that need it as well. If it's darkness, we'll only produce more darkness. But if it's light, more light's going to shine on the darkness around us. It's, it's a simple but profound call from the gospel. Many of us have been walking with Christ for some time now, seeking to drive out all of our darkness, but in the process, maybe we've forgotten to share the light with others. We're so focused on fixing ourselves, maybe, that we've forgotten to help others. For others of us, maybe all these things are just brand new for you, and you're hearing it for the first time. I want to invite you to, to designate time towards healthy rhythms that we've talked about today as a, as a starting place in the process, prayer and rest.
you have your communion elements, you can have those ready. We're going we're gonna to share in those here, and then I want to end with a song that we're going to sing together, a cappella. But if you have these ready, we can... On the night which he was betrayed... Jesus took the bread and he gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it to his disciples and he said, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of their sins. Do this in remembrance of me. So the ball is in our court, regardless of the season that we're in with Christ. If you feel as if you have darkness still lurking in the corners or the crevices of your life, ask God to redirect your focus in those areas to experience light. Shine his light into the darkness. If you feel as if you've already received light that leads to life, share that with others. Let your light shine bright for everybody to see. And don't hold back. Allow yourself to be filled to overflow. So that there is so much of it in you that you have no choice but to give it. And if all else fails, we can can remember the words of the song that we, we sang when we were really little. If you want to stand with me. Brennan, if you want to go back over. Yeah. This little light of mine. We're going to sing four verses. A cappella. Gabe, you can start us out. And I just, I just want to end with this because as, as insignificant as one little song may be, and as childish as the song may be, I think it's very powerful to sometimes revisit those foundational pieces. So we'll start it out. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Won't let Satan blow it out, I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it out, I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. 
Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for bringing us here this morning. And as, as different and out of the routine as it was this morning, um, we still thank you and we praise you for being here with us and, and guiding us through our lives, Lord. We love you and we thank you. And we pray that you will fill us up to an abundance so that we have no choice but to share your light with everybody around us. Sanctify us. Make us holy. Help us to know you and to, to grasp your mind so that we can be more like you every single day. Lord, I pray for those that are traveling, those that are sick this morning. Uh, we pray for Rose and her continued healing, uh, but we are so thankful that she is here with us this morning. Uh, we love her and we, and we thank you for her. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you for everything. Please continue to walk with us and guide us and be with our college students uh, and, and our elementary and high school students that have just started school and are rocking it out. We love you, Lord, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed.